Hi, this is Bryce with eLearning Brothers. Today I'm going to show you around our Captivate Player skins and how you can import them into your own course. I'm also going to show you uh, an additional feature on how you can lock down the player navigation so that your users won't be able to, to advance to the next slide until they've visited the whole slide and seen all the content in there. So I'll show you a little bit about that. So uh, one thing that I do want to note first off is that uh, we have two types of skins in the library. Ones that are using a widget type of style. So that would be from gizmo down to slick. All the other ones that are currently here that you see now in this tutorial are uh, skins that are built inside the tool. So each individual button, individual icon are, are used or built inside the tool, whether it's an image or um, drawn shapes. So, um, so once I, I have the skin, I'll open this uh, CPTX up and I'll then uh, copy and paste it into my new course. So that's really easy to do. All you need to do is, um, I like to just go ahead and delete this object here. I'll copy this uh, slide. I like to copy the entire slide. It makes it a little easier for me. But then I'll go into my course, go to the top, and go ahead and paste that slide in. I'll move it also to the very top of the, uh, the course. I want this uh, slide that has the player navigation in it to be at the very top because what these objects are doing is if I select on one of them you'll see if I go to timing uh, all these objects are set to uh, display for the rest of the project if I go to every slide you'll see see these buttons there However, you probably have noticed so far, uh, when I do paste it into a project, sometimes, sometimes funny things happen. So um, it's very easy to, to, to fix. Uh, all you need to do is select one of the objects that you want everything lined up to uh, first, and then hold down control and select the other objects that are maybe not in the right spots. Uh, once I do that, I want to make sure that this align uh, window um, option is selected. So that's this bar here. And then I'll go ahead and align middle oh, or align whatever you need to do. If it's lined up to the side, uh, you know, align uh, center like that. And sometimes I have to click it twice. I think you might have noticed I had to click that twice. Uh, it first went all the way down here and then it went back up. So just something, just something a little quirky, but, but easy to, easy to handle, easy to fix. So then if we go down to the subsequent slides, you'll see that it, it follows suit. All right, so that, that's it. That's all you have to do in order to copy and paste and use the skins inside your own course. So if I show you, it will then um, go to the next five slides and do all the buttons that's necessary. I show. So this player uh, specifically might not work for this uh, this uh, current course. Okay, so something that I did notice, check this out. So um, this uh, CC button is um, is kind of doing something funky. So uh, to fix that, it's a really easy fix. It's something something that's uh, again a little quirky. All you need to do is um, I'll show you what the problem is first. If you go to the state view, you'll see that the rollover is up here. However, it's locked and I can't move it. So um, I've had a couple customers call up and say, hey, you know what, I, I moved an object, but now uh, the hover or the rollover state stayed where it was. And I don't know how to fix it. I've been spending hours on this trying to fix it and move it back. However, it's a really quick fix. It's something kind of silly, but uh, really easy to, to fix. All I do is select the object, click use as a button, unche uncheck that, and then check it back. Now check this out. So what happens is I go to now state view and uh, see it's now in the right spot. The down is it's fine to have that down. I don't mind having that there. And, uh, and there you go. That's it. If you just want this uh, player object being uh, displayed properly and, and using it right, uh, you can go ahead and, and stop the video now. Uh, however, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the, the player navigation and uh, show you now how to uh, lock down this next button. So say for instance, if, uh, if, I want, if I have an audio clip in this slide and I want the user to um, listen to the whole audio clip before the next uh, button is displayed so they can't go forward, 
until the audio clip is done. Um, I'll show you how to do that. I built this uh, secondary interaction here, uh, which is the same. It just has a few special advanced actions on it, and I can go ahead and share this, uh, and that's no problem. But um, but what what it is is I have four major major advanced actions. One is called player first page. One is called player on enter. One is player last page and uh, player show submit. So these this individual interaction or this individual uh, player has a submit button and um, you can have this or not. It's it's nothing that special. All it does is is go to the next slide, but it you might have like a quiz or something that's on here that um, you want to to kind of have a submit look to it. So it's nothing special, just a, another next button that, that says submit. So what I did here is, again, I have all these objects set to show for the rest of the project. Uh, but I also have other objects here. So I have, again, the player, uh, the player bar itself, and uh, the next button here. So what would happen is if this was on top, this, this player bar was on top, that it would also go over this next button, and I don't want that. I also don't want this player bar, actually, I even don't want this player bar to be the rest of the project. I only want it to be the rest of the slide, because I have it also in other slides. So that's the first and foremost thing that you want to worry about. The next thing is the first page. The first page is the only page, really, that you don't want the back button. So that's what I have on this slide here. So at the beginning of the slide, I have an action that says on enter, execute advanced action. And that says player first slot, first page. And that hides the back button, hides the submit, and shows the next. So simple thing, a little thing, but uh, that's, that's what it does. Okay. The next slide down now uh, gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, it has a new advanced action that says player on enter SO2. SO2 stands for slide number two. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about this next button and why I placed a next button on each individual slide. This individual uh, next button is shown at the end of the slide, so I have an audio clip that goes for however long, and at the end of that audio clip, I want to show the next button. So that's that functionality. That's what that does. However, say, for instance, I go to the next slide, so slide number three, and then go back to slide two for some reason, and I just wanted to visit it again. I don't want the user to have to listen to the entire slide in order to see this next button. Right? I want them to, to say, I want the slide to be smart enough to say, hey, the user has already seen this slide. I don't uh, I, I want them to be able to go to the next slide if they if they choose, uh, whenever they want to, and not only at the end of the slide. So that's where this advanced action comes into play here uh, on enter SO2. So let's look at that. So it's a conditional action, and conditional actions just basically mean if this, do this, else, do something else. Okay. So for instance, this, I'm using a variable called ELB slide visited. So uh, it's saying if ELB slide visited contains uh, the value SO2, stands for slide O2, number two, uh, go ahead and uh, do this action. Show the um, the next button, which is this original next button on the first slide. Uh, show the back button and hide the submit. However, if uh, if the user has not seen the slide yet, and uh, the variable in, in spe it's more specific, if this variable does not contain this value do this action. I want you to go ahead and add to this va variable this value, but also I want to hide the next button, which is this original button, show the back, and also hide the submit. So what happens here is if, again, if I, the first time I visit this slide, this variable is not going to contain this value. What it's going to do is it's going to go to this else statement add the, this value to this variable, and then hide the next button. However, the next time I show the, or come visit this slide, this action is going to play again. And so it says now, says, uh, all right, ELB slide visited, does it contain it? Well, yes, the first time I went through the slide, it did add to that variable that value. So it does contain it now, and I want to show the next button and show the back, but I will also 
for this in particular slide, I want to hide the submit. So, so that's what it does. So that's simple. Um, each slide would have its own script, have its own um, uh, advanced action. So this one has SO3 that, um, that now checks to see if uh, the value, uh, if this value is in this variable. So then, um, so then the expression here would say, uh, take this uh, variable uh, and make it equal to what it is currently plus SO3. So that's what that does. And again, it hides the next because it can hide the, the next button, the whole entire slide, because it has that secondary next button here that shows at the end of the slide. Then for the, the submit button, say uh, I have this as like a quiz slide and I want uh, the submit button to show. And so I just have this extra um, uh, advanced action that says show back, show submit, but also hide the next. So I don't want that next and the submit being shown at the same time. And I'll have that happen. Then the last uh, advanced action is um, player last page. So uh, you could probably imagine what that is. Uh, all it does is hide the next button. It's not a conditional. It's just a standard action because there's never going to be a next button, a a next play slide after this this one. So it's always going to hide the next button. Uh, show the submit or hide the submit and also hide the back. But um, I hope that helped out with uh, with your development and good luck and have a nice day.